RGTI has delivered this truly astonishing gain over 2,500% in the last year. The low was $1.06. Just over a dollar. Yeah, and the high was $58.15. That 2,500% gain isn't just a roar. It's like, it really defines a moonshot, doesn't mm. it? And specifically, on October 31st, the stock closed at $44.27. That was up over 4% in just that single day. Mm -hmm. Trading volume was uh, pretty robust, came in just slightly above average, around 67 million shares. So that tells us the rally was solid, but maybe not driven by some sudden massive spike of you know, panic buying or anything. Right, consistent interest. Exactly. So if you're looking purely at the chart, the story seems overwhelmingly bullish. You see this massive run up. But what does the technical posture actually tell us? I mean, how strong is this trend, really? Well, if you strip away all the fundamental concerns for a moment, just look at the chart. Yeah, it suggests momentum is still firmly in control. This stock is trading miles above its key support levels. And when we look at the moving averages, uh, they're showing powerful buy signals. Okay, like what? Well, for instance, the 50-day moving average, that sits way down at 29.93 cents. Sunny 93. And the much longer term 200-day moving average, that's all the way down at $16.20. 16.20. Yeah. So when the price, currently $44.27, is tr trading that significantly above both those levels, it really confirms a... Uh, a a deeply entrenched, long-term bullish trend, yeah. technically speaking. Right. I see the chart, and yeah, it looks like a rocket ship ready for, I don't know, stage two separation or something. But the question is, does the internal momentum data agree? We saw the MED, that's the indicator tracking momentum swings, it's strongly positive at 2.21. That suggests buying power is, what, still accelerating? That's right. And uh, if we look at the relative strength index, the RSI, which tells us if the stock is overbought or oversold, mm -hmm. it's actually sitting right in the middle, 51.54. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so despite that massive run-up, the stock isn't technically exhausted yet, according to the RSI. It suggests there could still be headroom for the price to run, you know, if that bullish narrative holds. Okay, so the chart looks fantastic, momentum looks strong, but uh, charts don't pay the bills right. Exactly. Let's force this technical juggernaut to meet the, uh, the cold, hard reality of the balance sheet. This is where it gets really interesting and maybe a bit controversial. This is where we absolutely have to shift gears mm -hmm. from market enthusiasm to, let's say, fundamental skepticism. Look, Rigetti, like many revolutionary tech companies, um, it's not profitable. The earnings per share ending June 30, 2025 was negative $0.88, Ouch. which consequently leads to a negative P.E. ratio, minus 55.90. So we're talking about a company that's being valued entirely on its future, you know, still unproven ability to actually monetize quantum computing. And that focus on the future, that leads us straight to the valuation metric that is just, it's screaming for attention here. That the price to book or yes. PB ratio. Oh, yeah. It sits at a staggering 23.6 times, 23.6. But isn't it true that, I mean, any early stage disruptive tech company, especially in a field like quantum where, you know, fixed assets are presumably paramount, mm -hmm. Won't it naturally have a high PB? Is 23.6x really that extreme? Or is that just kind of the cost of entry for this type of stock? That's an excellent question. And yes, you definitely expect a premium for growth and potential. But yeah. uh, 23.6 times, that is yeah. extraordinary. We can contrast this, for example, with the U.S. semiconductor industry. That's a closely related tech sector, also very capital intensive. Right, makes sense. The average PB there is only 3.7 times. 3.7 versus 23.6. Exactly. RGTI is currently trading at more than six times the industry standard premium for its book value. This isn't just a high valuation. It represents an extraordinary, maybe even, dare I say, irrational level of faith that quantum computing is just about to hit its massive inflection point right now. And that faith, it seems to directly contradict the very people who analyze this sector for a living, right? The analyst consensus is overwhelmingly positive. 82% currently rate the stock a buy. Uh -huh. Yet their price targets are drastically low compared to where the stock is actually trading. Exactly. Yeah. That's the disconnect. We see the mean target from analysts is $19.55, and the median target is pretty much the same, $20. Okay. But the stock, as you said, is currently trading at $44.27. Oh. So the market price is more than double what the average professional analyst believes the company is actually worth based on their models. This means one of two things has to be true. Either the analysts are just hopelessly behind the curve on this one. Or... Or the market is currently caught up in, well, a bit of a frenzy. Okay, so if it's a frenzy, what's fueling it? What are the recent positive drivers that have powered this train past $40 and kept the momentum bulls charging? We did see some pretty compelling company-specific announcements back in October 2025. They announced new support for NVIDIA NVQ-Link. Now, 
For those of us who aren't, you know, living and breathing quantum engineering every day, why is integrating with NVIDIA's NVQ-Link platform so crucial? How does that help Rigetti's future monetization prospects? Well, this is a huge narrative driver. NVQ-Link is essentially about integrating AI supercomputing with quantum computing. In simpler terms, it basically connects Rigetti directly to the massive AI superhype cycle that's going on. Ah, uh, okay, the AI connection. Exactly. Quantum computing needs enormous classical computing power to operate and scale effectively. So by tightly integrating with the leaders in AI and supercomputing like NVIDIA, Rigetti signals that it's ready to move its technology, you know, out of the lab and into real enterprise applications. And that's what investors hope will actually justify that 2,500% gain eventually. Makes sense. And they are backing that narrative up with some tangible revenue, which is important. In late September 2025, they secured purchase orders for two of their nine qubit Novera quantum computing systems. That totaled approximately $5.7 million. It's real money coming in for their next generation systems not just theoretical potential. Okay, $5.7 million is real, but maybe not enough to justify the current market cap on its own yet. Definitely not on its own, no. It's about the direction. Right. Now let's shift to the shareholding pattern because this is where the conflict gets, I don't know, kind of personal. It reveals this confusing mix of faith and, well, profound doubt from the people closest to the company. Yeah, this is really interesting. The institutional faith seems strong. Large funds, institutional players, they hold 40.7% of the shares. That's significant. And crucially, in the last quarter, 262 institutions actually increased their positions. That suggests smart money is growing its long-term bet on Rigetti's quantum potential. Okay, 262 institutions buying more. That sounds like a clear vote of confidence, doesn't it? It does. However... When we look at the insiders, the directors, the executives, the story is basically the complete opposite. Over the last three months, insiders registered zero open market buys. None. Zero buys. And a startling 10 sells. This resulted in a net selling of over 654,000 shares. We even see a specific example. Director Sanford Helene Gale sold 62,000 shares on October 17th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why? Why would the people who presumably know the company's internal roadmap best be selling after a 2,500% gain. Is this just, you know, routine profit taking after a massive run, maybe diversifying? Or does it signal something deeper? Like maybe they know the revenue runway is just too long and these institutional investors are being overly optimistic right now. That's the critical question, isn't it? And I think the pattern suggests it's more than just routine profit taking. Usually with routine selling, you'd see a mix of buys and sells over time maybe some automatic stock plan sales. But a net selling figure of over 650,000 shares combined with zero open market purchases. That strongly suggests they believe the current price reflects a level of optimism that maybe won't be sustained by near-term earnings. Right. It feels like the institutional money is looking, you know, five, six years out, maybe longer. The insiders might be looking just six months out and deciding to take their significant gains off the table now. That makes sense. The timelines are different. Precisely. And that insider skepticism, well, it definitely feeds the short sellers. Short interest is currently sitting at 13.04% of the float, which is quite high. 13% is definitely significant. And what's really fascinating here is the sheer amount of short activity that's happening off exchange in the dark pools. Yeah, we saw that figure. 60.84% of the total volume on October 30th was recorded as dark pool short volume, almost two thirds. Why does it matter that the short activity is happening away from the main public exchanges? Does that indicate the bets against the stock are, I don't know, more sophisticated or just less visible to the average retail investor, perhaps? It probably indicates both, actually. Dark pool short volume is generally associated with larger, more sophisticated short sellers institutions, hedge funds who want to execute large trades without immediately impacting the public market price and showing their hand. So it confirms that smart, moneyed bearers are pretty aggressively betting against the stock's valuation, even as the price continues to climb on the lit exchanges. 